Welcome back to the video course on microelectronic circuits. In this lecture, we will discuss the MOSFET as an amplifier. Before we begin our study of the use of MOSFET in the design of amplifier circuits, let us look at the basis. The basis for this important MOSFET application is that when operated in a saturation region, the MOSFET acts as a voltage control current source. That is, changes in the gate to source voltage VGS give rise to changes in the drain current. ID. Thus, the saturated MOSFET can be used to implement a transconductance amplifier. However, we are interested in linear amplification, that is, in amplifiers whose output signal is linearly related to their input signal. The technique we will utilize to obtain linear amplification from a fundamentally non-linear device is that of DC biasing the MOSFET. We apply appropriate DC gate source voltage and a corresponding DC drain current can be obtained. Further, superimposing the AC voltage signal to be amplified VGS and the DC bias voltage VGS. By keeping the signal VGS smaller, the resulting change in the AC drain current can be made linearly proportional to AC input voltage VGS. Before we discuss the small signal operation of the MOSFET amplifier, we will discuss the total or large signal operation of the MOSFET amplifier. We will do this by deriving the voltage transfer characteristics of a commonly used MOSFET amplifier circuits. The basic structure of the common source amplifier is as shown in this figure. The AC input voltage is applied at this point. So, the input voltage is applied with respect to the gate and source. Therefore, VGS equals VI. The AC output voltage is measured at the drain point with respect to source. Therefore, the voltage at the drain and source is taken as VDS which is equal to V0. Before we go to the drawing the transfer characteristics, let us analyze VDS versus ID characteristics of the MOSFET. The drain characteristics can be plotted as shown here between VDS and ID for constant gate source voltages. So the VDS is taken along the x-axis, the drain current is taken along the y-axis and the corresponding gate source voltage is fixed for each and every values of VDS and ID. So we obtain a families of curves shown here. Then we can see that if we apply a Kirchhoff voltage law from VDD to ground, we obtain an equation given by VDD equals IDRD plus VDS. This is a straight line equation. If we can obtain, if we can represent this equation on this drain characteristics, take the, we obtain the red color line shown here. One of the point on this extreme end of, on this line is VDD. We can obtain this by making ID as 0 in this equation. Similarly, the another extreme end can be obtained by making VDS as 0 in this equation. So we obtain the coordinates of these two points on the of the straight line. The coordinate here is VDD comma 0 and the coordinate on other end of the line is 0 comma VDD over RD. If you can observe here, the variables of this straight line are VDS and ID. The variables of this MOSFET is VDS and as well as ID. Therefore, superimposing the drain characteristics and the DC load line, we can find the intersection points. Each and every intersection point is important for us because at every intersection point, we can obtain the corresponding output voltage. For example, for input voltage VGS less than or equal to threshold voltage, the transistor is off. So output voltage equals VDD to obtain this point. As input voltage keeps on increases, we can see that the intersection points moves above on this load line. For VGS as VGS1, the intersection point is here corresponding output voltage decreased. Similarly, for increase in VGS, say VGS2, 
the intersection point is here corresponding output voltage has been decreased further so as we keep on increase the input voltage corresponding output voltage keeps on decreases so this explanation can be translated into the characteristics called as transfer characteristics the transfer characteristics is a plot of v0 equals vds along the y axis and vi or input voltage equals vgs along the x axis now you can see that for input voltage less than or equal to threshold voltage the output voltage is at pdd so this can be even explained from the circuit for input voltage lying between less than or equal to the threshold voltage of the device the output voltage will be at vdd since the mosfet is off so the point here for vgs less than or equal to vt the output voltage is the point is at vdd the same thing same point can be expanded to the segment uh, x and a or from this vertical line to the point a so this in this uh, piece the there is no current flowing through the mosfet so we say that mosfet is cut off now further if input voltage is increased beyond threshold voltage corresponding output voltage decreases so from point a onwards the output voltage decreases now we can show this so we can obtain the mathematical equation governing the point a till point b before we go to the point b let us try to obtain the mathematical equation that governs a to b as we know that v0 equals vdd minus idrd upon simplifying this we can obtain v0 equals vdd minus idrd in this a and b point the saturation the mosfet is in saturation therefore the saturation current flows through the mosfet we can replace the drain current here with the saturation drain current from that we can obtain the expression for the output voltage governing the a to b curve the output voltage is given by v0 equals vdd minus the drain current in saturation times the rd let us label this equation as 1 so this equation 1 represents the line represent the curve between a and b further we can obtain the point b by solving the equation 1 and the uh, straight line or boundary which separates saturation region and triode region which is vds equals vgs minus vt the point b shown here can be obtained by solving equation 1 and equation 2 so from this curves we can it we can say that equation 1 is valid from point a to point b at point b we substitute equation 1 in equation 2 which is vds equals vgs minus vt to obtain the point b so from equations 1 and 2 we can solve and obtain the point b next we'll obtain the output voltage expression in the triode region considering same equation what we have shown earlier v0 equals vdd minus idrd in that equation if we replace the drain current by triode drain current we can obtain the expression for v0 in the uh, triode region so v0 is given by v0 equals vdd minus rd times the triode current as we know that in triode region the drain to source voltage is very small we can neglect the second term this simplifies to v0 equals vdd minus rd times mu cox times w bell into vgs minus vt times v0 if we can recall the expression for rds which is equal to 1 over mu cox times w bell into vgs minus vt if we can substitute here uh, rds as uh, 1 over this expression mu into cox times w bell into vgs minus vt we obtain uh, output voltage into 1 plus rd by 1 over rds equals vdd 
Upon simplification, we obtain the output voltage equals VDD divided by 1 plus RD by small RDS. So we can see that we can simplify this further and obtain the simplified equation as V0 equals VDD times RDS divided by RDS plus RD. As we know that uh, in the denominator RDS and RD can be compared. So RDS is very small and so we can neglect it the RDS. So the final expression for output voltage V0 equals VDD times RDS divided by RD. This shows that the MOSFET acts as a voltage control resistance. So in the triode region, we can replace the MOSFET with a resistance as shown in this figure. The equation 3 which we have shown here is valid for the curve we have shown in the previous slide uh, in the after the B that is uh, the equation 3 is valid from B to uh, the C point here where input voltage equals VDD. Further we can superimpose the AC signal uh, by choosing a Q point in between A and B so that the AC signal applied should be very small. The small signal here becomes uh, gives an amplified signal at the Q point. So now we can obtain the gain of the amplifier by uh, partially differentiating output voltage with respect to the input voltage at the Q point. By differentiating that we obtain the expression for the voltage gain of common source amplifier as minus mu COX times W bell into VGS minus PT times RD. So VGS equals input voltage at the Q point we can replace VGS as VIQ. Also we can make a note here the gain is negative. This implies that the common source amplifier is a inverting type amplifier. Further the above expression uh, can be made dependent on other parameters also. Let us consider the drain current in saturation where ID equals uh, uh, VGS half of mu COX times W well into VGS minus VT the whole square. If you remove the square here the square root can be incorporated into the ID and as well as the constant parameters. And if you can simplify this AV can be uh, this VGS minus VT can be substituted here so that expression for AV becomes minus mu COX times W bell root of ID divided by square root of half mu into COX by W by L. This shows that uh, the gain of common source amplifier depends on the uh, drain current ID and as well as aspect ratio and process transconductance parameter. This expression can be further simplified uh, to the level as shown next. So AV equals minus RD times square root of 2 times ID mu COX by COX into W by L. So from these expressions what we have derived so far we can say that the amplifier gain is proportional to the root of the DC drain current ID. Amplifier gain is also proportional to the aspect ratio. The amplifier gain is also dependent on the process transconductance parameter. So this ends up the video on MOSFET as an amplifier. In the next class we will discuss how to use MOSFET as a switch. Thank you.